It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18. Plus. Hi, everyone. I'm Deb Flaschenberg. Welcome to Yoga Birth Babies, a podcast produced by Prenatal Yoga Center. We will be diving into everything prenatal yoga, birth, and baby related, hoping to inspire, educate, and empower you through your journey into motherhood. Thank you for listening. Hi, I'm Deb Flaschenberg. I'm your host for Yoga Birth Babies. And today I have a guest, Nikki Shahid. She is one of the co-directors of Birthing From Within International, and she facilitates Birthing From Within trainings for birth professionals around the world. And I had the incredible pleasure of working with her last year when I did the Crossing the Threshold workshop through Birthing From Within. I wanted to do a podcast about processing birth stories. I've had a lot of students over the years tell me their birth stories, and I never was quite sure how to hold the space. So mainly I just stayed quiet and smiled and nodded and listened, but I knew there had to be more to it. And I knew that the birthing from within philosophy has something called birth story medicine. And I know Nikki had done that in the past. So I reached out to her because I know at this time, as our world is in a bit of chaos, a lot of people are still birthing and they may have a lot to process. So I thought this would be really pertinent to this time. So I hope you enjoy that. Before we get to that. (laughs) It's interesting. So I always told you about the different online courses I had. Well, now everything at the studio is online. Everything. I can't believe it. We even have partner yoga and massage online. We had infant massage online. All our classes are online and it took a little bit for it to get in the groove, but we're there and the community feels so incredibly robust. It's amazing. We had in class last week, we had somebody tuning in from France. We had someone tuning in from England because her sister took classes with us when she was pregnant, her sister in New York City. And it's just wonderful to see that we have busted beyond the walls of our Upper West Side studio, which I am looking forward to someday getting back into, but we have really expanded and that's exciting. So come take class with us, all the classes. We've had a packed childbirth ed class last week. We had a a packed caring for a newborn. It's amazing that when we just try to communicate through a different platform, we can still feel really connected. And that's that's a really excited, exciting. And I'm incredibly grateful that our community is still lively. So check that out. I also recently launched my second online course for yoga teachers. So the first one is called Who's Afraid the Pregnant Yogi? That is for yoga teachers who may not feel super confident in their skills with the pregnant student. And just recently, I launched Teaching the Postnatal Student, and that is for obviously Teaching the Postnatal Student. So you can check that out. So we've got such great offerings, and I'm just so excited to bring them to you. And then now I'm going to ask for you for uh, a little bit of help. If you can go to wherever you listen to the podcast from and leave a rating and review, it helps people find us. And I'd really appreciate that. Okay, that's enough from me. Let's take a super quick break. And when we come back, please enjoy my conversation with Nikki. With Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hi, Nikki. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. I am really excited to speak with you. I really enjoyed our weekend together doing Crossing the Threshold, and you are so insightful about all the birth work you do that I'm just thrilled to jump in and talk about birth stories and processing. So thank you for your time. 
Yeah, I'm so glad to be here. Oh, good. So I know a little bit about you because I got to spend a whole weekend with you, but let's, if you don't mind just telling the community a little bit about yourself and how you got started as a birth worker. Sure. So I am one of the co-owners of Birthing From Within International. And years ago, after I had my second child, I just felt like I was losing touch with myself, like I needed something for me. And I had taken a birth class and I thought it would be really neat to do that as well. And so I found a Birthing From Within training in Vancouver, British Columbia. And what I thought I was going to learn was how to teach people to give birth the right way and how to avoid common pitfalls, um, including some of the ones that I had experienced. And I sort of feel like I stumbled down a rabbit hole because what I actually encountered there was a very open-minded, open-hearted, soulful, and compassionate approach to birth where there really was no right and wrong. Um, so over the years I took, I devoured actually every, um, every class that birthing from within offered because it was so nurturing to me and eventually became certified, um, became a facilitator and, um, now one of the co-owners of the company. I have to tell you, I love the birthing within methodology. I just adore it. I loved studying it in the past. I love studying it with you. I got a chance to talk to Pam England. Uh, it's just, I really believe in it. And I think you just totally nailed it. There's no right way. And it just yeah. opens up for the possibility of shedding preconceived ideas of what we think we have to have. And and I, again, it's the story of Anana. Those that have been listening to the podcast know that I've been obsessed with it. Um, <laughs> it's that like, it's the shedding what we think we need and just going deeper and deeper yeah. and deeper and then kind of losing ourselves and coming back. I just, so yeah. yay. I'm so excited. Yeah. I really <laughs> adore this stuff. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. So um, the reason I reached out is because recently I've had a lot of students. We're kind of, I feel like we're in a little bit of a birth cycle, like um, February, March. I see a lot of people giving birth. And then I've had them starting to come back. And two times in a row, two different students told me about their birth stories. And they very similar that they, they sounded somewhat traumatic. One actually very recently she said she was basically in labor for a whole week. It was just uh, herself and her husband. And she ended up with an emergency cesarean. And then after all of that, she said, well, all that matters is I have a healthy baby. And, right. and that made me sad. And I'm like, well, you know, there, there's more. And I felt like people dismiss or they feel they need to dismiss their birth stories and, and it goes unprocessed. And then on the other side, as someone that hears birth stories often, I feel like I don't know how, I don't comment, but I try to hold the space, but I feel like I don't really know how to give them the space to process. So I know you do. So <laughs> I figured. I know a thing or two about that. Yeah. I know. So, and I feel like many birth workers, we, I've talked to my friends, we fall into the same category. We want to support people and we want also people to be able to process. So I guess let's start with why is it important for someone to process their birth stories? Yeah. Well, I mean, for one, birth is a, an event that is a personal transformation, right? Birth is an initiation because on the other side of that, you have a new identity. You step into a new role in life and really multiple identities shift. I mean, Yes, you become a parent, but also your relationship with your partner shifts, your relationship with your extended family shifts, um, even your relationship with your career, your coworkers, your friends, right? So really the earth under your feet is shifting as you become a parent. And birth is the, the crystallization of that, right? The crystallization of that moment when you cross the threshold and you become somebody new. And this is why there are so many books and blogs and classes about birth, right? Because we can sense just on a deep human level that this is a very meaningful personal experience. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of cultural messages. Of course, there's always been cultural messages, right? But now, when we're also very interconnected, we have a lot of cultural messages with absolute thinking. And that absolute thinking can range from 
um, doctor knows best to you can't trust the medical system. They can range from this is an extremely important event in my life to at least I had a healthy baby, right? And so our culture is very polarized in the way that we look at birth and parents are caught in the middle of that. And so it's important for parents to have a compassionate and um, a really neutral story listener who is not attached to the outcome. So when I'm listening to someone's story, I'm not attached to making them feel better. I'm not attached to them feeling happy about their birth or even finding resolution, what I'm there to do is meet them with compassion and meet them with validation. And really that's 90% of the medicine in listening to a birth story. What have you noticed when you've encountered people that may have had a bit of a traumatic birth or just an unprocessed birth? How do you feel like it's kind of stuck in them? You know, really it tends to show up in everyday life. Right? So people may become very hypervigilant with their baby. Um, people may fall into perfectionist tendencies saying, well, I didn't get that right, so I have to get everything else right. Hmm. Right? I mean, there are, there are many different ways that it echoes. It has this ripple effect out into their life. And so it absolutely continues to show up, if not every day, maybe every week or every month, in a way that can be disruptive or in a way that keeps them from really living the life that they want to live, even if it's unconsciously happening. So how do we encourage people? Because what you do in the the listening, and maybe let's just jump into that. So when you do the, the birth story medicine, what is that? Like, how do people even know that they should talk to someone about their birth story. I feel like it's just something that people didn't even think to connect with someone else other than family or friends and even think, I really need to process this. Right. Well, you know, birth story medicine is a method that was developed by Pam England, who's the founder of Birthing From Within and of Birth Story Medicine, Um, that was really about getting past the events because we get so stuck on the medical events in our culture and and really digs into the underlying meaning that is being given to those events. So the best time for someone to reach out to a birth story listener is when they're feeling a call. There's some sort of internal tug at their heartstrings. And sometimes it's because they're pregnant again and they're going to have a new baby and they don't want to bring the last birth into this birth process. It might be because their baby is getting a little older and they're not in constant frantic putting out fires mode and actually have time to sit Mm -hmm. and reflect and realize something about this experience isn't sitting right with me. So one of the things that... I see that can be a little bit sticky is I'll have other people contact me and say, I want you to talk to my friend and I want you to give them a birth story session. And it's something that I'm willing to do if the person wants it, because so often uh, other people want to fix, right? There isn't, there is an attachment to the emotional outcome and it comes from a very loving place of, I want my friend or I want my partner, or I want my client to feel better. But until someone is feeling that inner call, it's not going to land, right? It's this ripening process that has to happen with stories. And for some people, that's a week after they give birth. And for some people, that's a couple of years after they give birth. So it's when you're feeling that tugging on your heartstrings that this birth experience is just not sitting right with me and I can't sort it out on my own because if I could, I would have done it by now. That's the time to reach out. So what, can you describe how someone can process their birth without just re-traumatizing themselves? Cause I, I've seen that. And again, I don't, I don't, I, I just try to hold the space, but I see the pain in their eyes and I hear them telling a lot of people and I'm just like, you're just going back into it. Yes. 
Absolutely. When we just tell that story again and again from a rote place, right, tell it the same way every single time from start to finish, really it tends to just kind of kick up any dust that was sitting there with the birth story. And for a time it may even feel good, right? I've heard people after postpartum support meetings say like, thanks, I feel good that I told my story. And then later they get on the Facebook group and they're like, man, I actually feel sadder than ever right now, right? So you're absolutely right, Deb, that there is a risk of people re-traumatizing themselves. And one of the reasons is that birth stories are so vulnerable, Mm -hmm. so vulnerable. And we are lacking wise elders who know how to listen mindfully and hold space for birth stories. So when you take your story out there and you open your heart to people, you never know what you're going to get back. You know, you could get a very compassionate listener and you could get someone who tells you at least you had a healthy baby and they're not saying it from a menacing place. They're saying it because it's the cultural narrative and it's the only thing they know how to say right now. Because do you think it's because they're uncomfortable or they just don't know? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. They feel it's uncomfortable to sit with someone else's discomfort. It's uncomfortable to be with someone else's pain. And we often feel like I should fix this. I should make them feel better, right? And if you really inquire into where is that coming from and you notice where you feel it in your body, it often comes from your own discomfort right? of sitting with pain. Yeah, I remember actually you did an exercise with us. Um, I don't know exactly what it was. I just remember that we would say stuff. I think we were looking at, we were sitting on the floor looking at our partner saying mm-hmm. things that, maybe we're painful or we, or I don't remember what it was, but you, you were encouraging us just to speak what was coming out and let it be uncomfortable and let the other person just hold the space. Yeah. And, and it went deep. It was, you, I remember you just kind of like, what else? Or what is that? How does, yeah. how do you feel? And do, do you know what I'm talking about that day? That, that I do. Exercise? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so is that the kind of thing that you're talking about? You're just helping the person move the layers and go deeper, or maybe I'll just go to the bigger questions. Like how do you sit and listen to somebody? Yeah. Well, you know, that's, I like the way you put it, move the layers, right? Because there are definitely layers to the story. There's like the, what happened, right? If you look at a snapshot of what happened, but then underneath that, there's everyone's internal experience the way that everybody felt about it. And under that is the meaning they're creating about it. The meaning about birth, the meaning about themselves, the meaning about partnerships, about asking for help, about the other people in the room. And that's kind of the layer that we're working on getting down to because at the very root of every action that we take, every word that we speak, every decision is our need to feel safe, to feel loved, and to belong. So then how right. do you so do no that? no matter, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> well, I mean, it's quite a process, right? Yeah. It's, at this point, it's like a three-month training to get there. Yeah. But really, it comes so much down to deep listening. Uh-huh. And the biggest obstacle that we have, as birth professionals and as humans to deep listening is our own internal chatter. Mm. Because when we hear something, we immediately start making meaning. We immediately start saying me too, or I know someone else that that happened to, or I can't believe that that would happen. And we're so in our own head that we're not actually present with the person who's standing before us. So one of the best things that you can do if you want to become a better listener is start to listen to your own internal chatter. Start to listen to the way that you make sense of the world and really start to challenge yourself. Is that actually true? And how do I know that to be true? What else might be true here and what else and what else? 
Oh, I really like that because I have to say I relate to that <laughs> whenever my husband's talking to me. I'm like, yeah, and then I'll ask questions. I'm like, no, it's because I'm listening. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's because I'm, I'm going through my lens outward is what we don't want to do when we're listening to someone tell their birth story. We right. don't want to put our reflection back there. So you talked a little bit about the phrase of as long as the baby's okay, but what else can friends and family maybe steer away from or mm-hmm. any leading questions <laughs> or phrases that, again, have the best of intentions, right. but sometimes may make the person feel invalidated or just clam up more? Right. Right. Well, basically anything that begins with at least mm. is probably not going to be helpful, right? Uh, Brene Brown has that great video on sympathy versus empathy, right? So when we're in empathy, we're perspective taking and we're being with someone and we're in touch with our own vulnerability. But many people respond to birth stories with sympathy, Right. Oh, well, at least you had a healthy baby. Well, at least you can do it differently next time. Mm-hmm. You know, for the next one, you can get a midwife or get a doula or take the quote-unquote right birth class, right? So the do-over birth, that's another common one that we hear. Or sharing your own birth story, right? So commiserating. Mm. Um, it might feel good in the moment, but doesn't actually help to resolve anything for that person or for you. Um, so anything that is not focused on the here and now and the human in front of you. So if someone is, this is again for birth workers and families, if yep. someone tells, starts to tell you their birth story, what's an effective way just to hold the space? And as we talked about, let the person go into their experience without re-traumatizing themselves, without the listener adding their level of, of sympathy or commiserating, how, how, is it just listening? Is it literally just keeping your mouth shut and listening? Well, it can be, and, you know, that's certainly better than at least, I mm-hmm. would say. Um, but one of the things that you can do is acknowledge, like, wow, you're sharing something really vulnerable with me, mm. and I want to meet you in that place, and I want to be of service to you. So what would be the best thing for me to do while you're telling me the story? What would be most helpful for you right now? That's really great. So can you talk me through a bit about the a birth story session? Someone can, someone reaches out and they're saying, you know, I feel like this birth story needs to be processed. It feels a little yeah. stuck. I feel a little stuck in the experience. And they, they reach out and they hire you. So what would a birth session look like? And what can someone yeah. expect from that? So I sit down with people anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. And um, I don't actually go for the bookend to bookend story. So I, you know, take in a short summary. But really what we want to focus on is the part of the story that is causing them the most friction. So it makes it more manageable for that storyteller to focus on one part of their story and then start to peel back the layers of beliefs and assumptions and conditioning that led up to that moment to start to identify what they've put in the light and what they've put in the shadow and how we can create compassion and even value the part of that person that they've put in the shallow and and take it into action, right? Start to live a new belief, start to live a balance between the light and the shadow so that the meaning that's been given to that story can start to be rewritten because we can't change the event, but the meaning can shift and it will shift when someone starts to embody something new. All right. I feel like I kind of get that, but not really. So can you give me an example of like something you've heard and how you would react to that? I'm kind of throwing that at you. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> or if, if I can share some birth story and you can, and then tell me like what you hear or how, how we move to the shadow. I'm just, I'm just so curious. Sure. I don't feel like I get it. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's, let's share. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think which kid. <laughs> 
<laughs> stupid. <laughs> um, I will go with the second because it's the the one that I remember. <laughs> it was the most recent. Um, yeah. So where where do I start? Well, why don't you tell me a part that feels sticky for you? A part of okay, the story that causes you friction. Okay, then I'm going to have to go to the friction. first one because the second one was pretty quick and I was pretty happy with. Um, okay. In fact, I really was. I was actually I was like, oh, that's, that's cool. Um, the first one, a place that feels sticky was the five hours of pushing I did not enjoy and I, I, I kind of hated. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pushing is hard. Um let me ask you, and it might sound like a silly question, but I just want to make sure that I understand clearly, how was it a problem for you to be pushing for so long? It was exhausting. It was, it felt mm-hmm. defeating. It felt like this child will never come out. Um, yeah. I was deeply overwhelmed of how is this child going to come out? And it just, it took so, and it was painful. It was the most painful part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did you manage to get through that? Five hours is a long time to be pushing. Because I needed the child to come out. I didn't know what else yeah. to do. There was, there was, there was no way, another, there was no other way. I even remember asking mm-hmm. the midwife, like, can't you just pull him out? Yeah. Yeah. So you just kept going, huh? Yeah, it was exhausting. It was, yeah, it was just, all I remember is just the pain and exhaustion mm-hmm. and defeat. Just like, oh my God, I, I felt like I was going to be there forever. Yeah. Yeah. And how does that moment still show up for you today? Oh, I don't know. Um, wow. I don't, um, I, on, Ooh, that, that was something popped up. That's cool. Okay. So how does it show up today? Um, I st- actually think I have some anger at myself for not taking better care of my body. I was really active, but I, I do what I tell my students not to do. I was so overly active and so trying to do this pregnancy thing right, that my Mm -hmm. pelvic floor and ligaments were really imbalanced. And I I still blame myself that because of that, it took so long for him to come out. Wow. Mm -hmm. I hadn't really worded that like that in a while. Yeah. Interesting, huh? Yeah. Now, let me ask you, if you were to create a symbol for this being overly active, trying to get it right, what would that symbol be? A symbol. You know, weirdly, I just kind of see like a sun, like a circle with like pointy little spikes around it, like a little sun. I don't know yeah. where that came from. Yeah. And. If you were to change the symbol in any way, whether that were its size or its color or its proximity to you or its position, what would you want to shift about that symbol? Um, maybe make the spike smoother. And it's like in the vision that I had, it was like bright and yellow. Mm-hmm. So like hot. So maybe make it um, cooler and softer and flowy. Ah. Yeah. Like so I wish if, my pelvic floor was at that time. Yeah. <laughs> Just send that vision to your pelvic floor. Yeah. Um, and if you were to draw that into your life in the places where you are overactive, right, where you're striving too mm. much today, what do you suppose your kids would notice was different about you? Oh, that's beautiful. Um, I like that you brought it back to now because, I, yeah, I'm not that different. Um, I bet the whole family would just feel a little, it will just feel a little easier because I'm definitely like a, we got to do this now. We got to get this done. Yeah. I bet that would, oh, wow. I like this. Okay. <laughs> I like that this circle back now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I see how our births are a reflection of, they they don't live in a vacuum. They you got it. Yeah, that you got it. Who I am at the birth. It's not like it was its own incident. It was because of the life around it, 
and there's still some of that now. That's right. That's absolutely right. You know, birth is a microcosm of life, and birth is an event that kind of holds a magnifying glass up to your your habits, your patterns, and your beliefs, and you wouldn't have brought it up now if it weren't still a problem for you now. Because otherwise it would be like, you know, back then I did a lot of, a lot of striving and overexerting myself, and then I kind of brought in more compassion, and that part felt healed, right? Feels healed. Mm-hmm. But because you're still bringing it up now, there's something there that still plays out in your life, even all these years later. Oh, so that, thank you. Okay. So that is how you, yeah. you, you approached it without judgment, but then how did you, I guess this is part of the whole course and it's a three month course, but I guess over time you learn to listen for little clues of like, let's dig a little deeper here. Yeah. You know, mostly what I'm doing, Deb, is becoming really, really curious about your perspective. Because everything that you say and you do and you believe makes complete sense given everything that you've experienced and learned in your life. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do as a story listener is I want to understand you on a deep level because what you're doing makes sense. I want to get in there and kind of be standing beside you, if you will, taking on that perspective and saying, oh, okay, looking around, this is what's going on here. I see. That is so interesting. It makes me want to take this. I mean, I haven't even finished the first uh, birthing from within <laughs> course I took. Still planning on it. Um, but I really, I do. And There's, what I just did with you, yeah. that was just a teaspoon. That was just a teaspoon of medicine, right? Because normally a session is an hour or more. Right. And what I just did with you is not the same as what I've done with anyone else. So each session, the medicine for that person is unique to what they're bringing to the story and, you know, how their life and their experiences trail behind them and inform what they're doing and believing now. Oh, okay. So I want to ask about, so each person, okay, we're gonna have to take a quick break, but when we come back, I want to go deeper into what you were saying that the medicine is going to be different for each person. All right. So we're gonna take a super quick break because you've (laughs) I'm really excited about this conversation. I'll be right back. (laughs) This podcast is sponsored by Skylight Frame. Mother's Day is almost here. What are you getting her? Something that shows you care. Something that makes her feel loved. Something that won't stress you out. Something like the Skylight Frame. The Skylight Frame is the perfect gift. It's a touchscreen photo frame your whole family can upload photos to from wherever they are in the world. It's a way to share with her all the moments that matter. It sets up in seconds. You can even make sure that it's already loaded with photos when your mom opens her Mother's Day gift. And her Skylight Frame can hold thousands of the treasured photos you share. It's an easy, heartfelt way for mom to stay connected with those who matter most. It really is the perfect gift. Now, as a special Mother's Day offer for our listeners, Get 15% off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com slash easy. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E dot com slash easy. Get 15% off your Mother's Day purchase now at skylightframe.com slash easy. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah. Oh. Sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Okay. So we're back. So again, everyone's going to have their own birth story. And I, I love what you're saying, like their own medicine, because they're bringing their own perspective. So how is it just getting curious and listening and bringing forth what you're hearing and asking them to explain it more? But what do you mean by each person has their own medicine? Right. So if I speak to you about your birth story, I'm not going to take this same question. I drew a little symbol in my notes here, right? Mm -hmm. With your pointy son. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have that same conversation with your friend. Mm -hmm. 
it might look similar, but it might not. There might be something else that they need. They might need practical information about birth. They might need to hear the story of Inanna. They might need to be asked solution-focused questions. So part of what you learn as a birth story listener and as a birthing from within mentor or doula is tools to bring to people to help them discover their own answers. Because at no point in our conversation did I give you an answer that I can recall, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about helping people discover their own answers because we are each of us amazingly resourceful. And so my job is to help you find and cultivate and nurture those inner resources that you already have. So what made you, because it really threw me, like, give it a symbol. I'm like, oh, huh, interesting. Is that something you go to or is that like, did that spontaneously come into your mind or what was the symbol about? Oh, that's that's a tool that we use. Okay. That's a tool that we use. Times is used in birth story listening, is used in the mindful communication course for birthing from within. So, yeah, and it's just one of the tools in my tool bag that I pull out. And sometimes it's like, yeah, I've used this one in a session before. And other times I'm like, I don't know where we're going, but I'm hearing a call and I'm, I'm going to follow this, um, you know, just intuitive sense after doing this work for so many years. I'm going to follow this intuitive sense of where we need to go next. Yeah, it definitely was not what I was expecting, um, <laughs> that, which is good, which is good because yeah. sometimes I feel like with a lot of the birth stuff, I, I have a lot of knowledge and it's good that you, you threw it in a different direction. Um, so I appreciate that. So how can, how do you find that after a session, someone finds a sense of healing? Like, honestly, like even from our like three or four minutes of, of just discussing my first birth, like the fact that you brought it around to, um, what I still see in my patterns and habits, what else or how else does someone find healing from sharing their birth story? So a lot of it is that, that opening and that new perspective, just that alone can bring a lot of healing to people, but beyond creating awareness, it's important to also take action. Archetypally, it's the hunter, huntress, and the love warrior, right? You're illuminating what, what is happening or what has happened, and then the love warrior takes action without attachment to outcome and from a place of total compassion, which is why I was asking you what your kids would notice was different about you. Mm. So what I tell people at the end of a session is basically we've laid a foundation here. We've kind of cleared the land. We've laid a foundation. And now what you're going to do next is build on top of that. You're going to be exercising the muscles of self-compassion through action so that you become stronger and stronger at it and you start to integrate the light and the shadow in a really deep embodied way. Mm. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Now, what if someone wants to process their story, but they don't have a a trained listener and they just want to have a supportive listener? How can they do that? How, How do they get to do they just, again, do they just tell their person, like, just let me talk? Like, how can someone work through this if they can't have an actual trained listener? Mm, well, first I do want to mention that there are birth story listeners who do distant sessions mm, okay. on Zoom or on the phone. So you don't have to have someone right in your community, although it is nice to talk face-to-face. Um, but for this one, I'm going to quote Adrian Marie Brown, who said, move at the speed of trust. So I would not tell my birth story to someone the first day I met them, right? I would find the people who have demonstrated to me that I can trust them to hold space for me. I can trust them to listen to me without giving advice or trying to cheer me up. I would find the people who can hear me out. And then I might first talk to them about just a little piece of my story because I don't want to open my whole heart if it's actually going to, if they're going to hurt me, Mm -hmm. probably unintentionally, right? But if they're going to hurt me, I don't want to share my story. So I might just share a little bit of my story. And if I felt like they showed me I could trust them, then I might share a little more and a little more, um, 
you know, really making sure that that trust has been established with that person and I can open up to them. Okay. I do feel like so many people, maybe it's just because I work in the birth world, but I feel like I hear a lot of birth stories of people like, I was just at a birthday party on Sunday and one of the women was there. um, I think she was 11 weeks postpartum or eight weeks, something like that. And someone else had three kids and somehow, again, birth stories came up and it was another birthday party the day before and birth stories come up. So I don't know if it's because... um, well, that there was a, uh, someone that was three weeks, and I said, "How was your birth?" So <laughs> that makes sense. But I feel like people are very open to sharing their birth stories. Yeah, people really want to feel heard. They yeah. really want to feel heard, and um, sometimes they do get that. Right? They're just looking for the chance. Is somebody going to hear me out? Because I've had a life changing experience, and I just want the chance for somebody to hear me out. But if they find that there are enough times that they share their story and people don't hear them out. They give advice. They try to cheer them up. Eventually they will stop sharing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, I, and I so long to listen well, um, because I do have people that tell me whether it's my students or just family, friends, you know, I, I feel like I, I'm quiet for it, but I feel like I'm not doing enough. So this is really exciting to hear this. All right, we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, if there's anything else you want to share about the the act of listening and the birth story medicine, as well as one tip or piece of advice you would like to offer new expectant parents, we'll be right back. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Okay. So first of all, thank you for giving me my, my little mini session. That was awesome. Um, but is there anything, is there anything else that's really rich and important to know for again, family or friends or someone that just had a birth and there, or not even it just had just someone who's still processing. Is there any last thing you want to share? Yeah. You know, the best advice I could give to folks who interact with people who are newly postpartum, is to meet the person where they are, to validate them where they are and just as they are without trying to move them forward or bring resolution. So even to just say, wow, this is really weighing on you, can make someone feel heard. Mm. Right? So allowing people to have intense feelings. And even if it feels uncomfortable to stay in the room physically and also mentally to hang in there with them, if you can, you know, obviously if you're getting triggered, you may need to set a boundary and say, you know, I I need to step away and I want to um, give you resources because I want your story to be heard by someone who can really hold it. And I don't feel like I'm in that space right now. But if you feel like you can hold it, then really show up with your whole heart and show up for yourself too, right? Let that circle of compassion include yourself and what you're experiencing and and what you're feeling in your own body and then validate them, right? I have have one more question. Have you ever been in a situation where you're listening to a birth story and you realize this is this may need more and bigger attention. Like it might be you might be seeing some red flags of psychosis or or any of the PMADs. Absolutely, yes. And that's why it's so important, not just for birth story listeners, but for all birth professionals to have um, resources in their community that they can refer to, um, and to make sure that those people are operating from a place of trauma-informed care so that when you do make those referrals that you're leaving that person in good hands. 
Yeah, in New York, we're so fortunate that we have the Motherhood Center, which is really an amazing place, but we also, we have some amazing resources. So at Prenatal Yoga Center, we, we have those resources, but it made me aware that you might be listening to something that you're, again, you're peeling back those layers and you might be thinking, wow, this is more than just processing. Like there's more that needs to be addressed than... Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Absolutely. And it's not uncommon when someone's peeling it back for them to say, wow, I really need to go back to therapy. Have you been in a situation... Have you been in the situation where they don't realize that, that you, like, especially, I guess I keep thinking like really deep, like, um, a psychosis situation or OCD that they may not even realize that they need to seek help. I can think of one instance where the person probably did not have a lot of awareness about that. And so, um, I was pretty diligent to continue checking in Mm -hmm. afterwards and, and asking them about what kind of help they were getting and if they were reaching out at all. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they did wind up getting professional help, but in that moment, it did seem like it wasn't completely on their radar. Cause I could imagine um, if I was the listener, I feel like maybe I'd feel a little scared, like, ooh, ooh, this is getting into territory beyond my beyond my right. scope. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's why we're not we're not diagnosing as yeah. first story listeners. We're not getting into like childhood trauma, yeah. you know, and delving into the past. It's like what is what is present for you right now and what are the layers underneath? And, you know, that's as far as we're taking yeah. it. Um uh, because that's our you know, that's our practice. And then there are, um, other professionals who can take it much deeper uh, for those who really need to go into all of that. Oh, this is such great work. I am so excited. I've had a chance to talk to you. So I'm hoping this got people excited to learn more about active listening to birth stories as well as maybe processing. So where can people find your work? So you can find my work at birthingfromwithin.com um, and locally birthingfromwithinsanantonio.com. Oh, so good. And are you coming back to the city to do another um, Crossing the Threshold weekend? I hope that we're going to have another Crossing the Threshold there in the future soon, yeah. It was so good. I really, really enjoyed it. And, and your storytelling is just fantastic. It was really exciting to listen to. Thank you. Great to be there. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you for your time. I really appreciate having a chance to chat with you. My pleasure, Deb, and thanks so much for the work you're doing in the world. Thanks. All right. Be well. Bye. This has been an episode of Yoga Birth Babies, produced by Prenatal Yoga Center. You can catch us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Periscope. I'm Deb Flaschenberg. Thanks for listening. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.